In a bizarre twist of fate, the government actually reached its target it set itself. That's right. In 2019, the Tories said that they will recruit 20,000 new police officers, and this week they actually reached that target. But critics are keen to point out that the number of actual number of police officers is only 3,500 higher than it was in 2010. Well, joining me now is former Met detective Peter Blexley, a font of knowledge on all matters policing. Peter, thank you for coming on the show. So they finally hit their target. Is it too little, too late? I'm very glad that Boris Johnson's target was hit this week and that Rishi Sunak took such delight from the target being met. Although, of course, some will say because of increases in population, that we need even more police officers. And I think that's very true. I also need to point out, of course, that the Metropolitan Police, the largest force in England, didn't hit its target for recruitment. It fell short by some 1,000 or so officers. So there is still more work to be done. Um, Peter, I know um, when you were on the show um, recently, you said you had concerns about the vetting process of new officers. Obviously, there's been a huge amount of scrutiny around that. But if we're, if we're vetting so many officers in a short period of time, how can we guarantee we won't keep out the wrong ones? Well, we simply don't. And we know that in recent times, vetting, which fell way, way short of what we, the public, should expect, has enabled people who are entirely unsuitable to policing to get a warrant card and wear that uniform. There is, of course, an ongoing process in order to try and remove those officers. But yes, that is remains a big, big concern for me. Have all these 20,000 officers been suitably checked? Do we know that they are worthy people who are going to be dedicated public servants? Or are we going to face another slew of stories of wrongdoing, unacceptable behaviour and further embarrassment? Time will tell. Well, Peter, um, we, we know um, often we speak about the fact that morale within the police force is very low. They're criticised all the time. Endless reports come out about the institutional racism, homophobia, misogyny. How, how hard a task is it going to be to actually per, uh, persuade people to join the force when they're so often attacked and lambasted? Well, to a certain extent, the police have always been subject to scrutiny by the media and they've been criticised as far back as the days a long, long time ago when I joined. But as I would say to any potential new police recruit, there are two things you need to bear in mind. Number one, you won't get rich in all likelihood, unless, of course, you, you aspire to one of the very, very senior ranks. So you won't get rich and you won't be popular. But the rewards that can be earned from doing a job which is utterly unique and like no other far outweigh any of the pitfalls. And I still do urge people to join because if you're going to be a dedicated public servant, if you're going to make the sacrifices that policing asks of you, and if every day you are going to be completely committed to every task, even when that is extremely difficult, then you will have a career of public service that you will be able to look back on with great pride. You know, Peter, we've been contacted by viewers today who are saying, you know, hallelujah to this. Um, they're more likely to see criminals on their streets who they know than Bobby's who they know. So certainly Bobby's on the beat is something that people want. But it's part of the problem, not the, the numbers of officers, Peter, but the types of police and they're expected to do now. They seem to spend a lot of time on social media or look after missing persons or acting as a de facto social services. Is it just time to get back to proper grassroots policing? Without a doubt, it is. And we've been hearing some encouraging noises from the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, who wants police to focus on policing. In the last 20 years or so, there's been a kind of neoliberal orthodoxy that has polluted policing leadership and, is, and, and has led to officers becoming, in so many regards, mental health workers, social workers, and interpreting the law for themselves rather than enforcing the law. If we can get back to the principles of policing, which is what I'm sure your viewers and listeners want, because that's what people tell me, and that is patrol the streets, be visible. That makes the public confident and it helps the public trust police officers. Secondly, 
when crime is reported, investigate it promptly and professionally. And thirdly, lock up bad people, because those, in my opinion, are what the public want the police to do. Here, here to that, Peter. Um, fi finally, Peter, um, 20,000 new officers. Um, do we have reason to be optimistic about this? Yes, as long as they've been vetted properly, that they're trained properly and that they are supervised and managed properly by experienced cops who know what they're doing. If those three boxes are ticks, then, then this is going to be a, a good story. Peter Blexey, thank you. Joining us um, from Italy, I hope you're about to enjoy a glass of something ice cold. Thank you, as ever, for your input on GB News. OK. Joining me now is former DCI in the Met, Perry Benton. Hello to you, Perry. Thanks for joining us. Um, you heard what Peter said there. We have reasons to be optimistic. Do you agree? I 100% agree. Um, I think my colleague is right in that we should all um, look on these 20,000 as something positive. The biggest concern that I have, though, is that is only a small drop of replacement of those officers that have retired and resigned. Um, my colleague mentioned the, that the public want us to look up bad guys, and he talked about what the police have been doing over the last 15 to 20 years. And I would echo their sentiments. The policing have gone away from what they should be doing. They should be supporting the communities. They should be investigating crimes. But for far too long, because of the government cutbacks, the closing of police stations, the, lock of, the lack of um, support in communities, that's where we're struggling in the police. And I think I welcome the extra officers. I think better training needs to happen. And also the fact that, you know, in the Met especially, they closed down what was once the world's best training college. Hendon Training College was once the world's best and world leaders. And because of the cutbacks in the government, they've had to close down those, um, the college and now have extra training at universities and things like that. And that whole recruitment and training piece needs to be looked at because the police have gone away from traditional training mm. and recruitment because they wanted people with direct entrance experience mm. from universities. And, and also in the Met, the only problem with the Met is that they stopped recruiting people from outside of London. They had a history recently of recruiting, recruiting people purely from London because they wanted London to be representative of the communities they serve. But they missed a huge chunk of exceptional people that would have joined the policing um, but weren't allowed because of the Met's recruitment policy. Um, Peter, you, you, I'm sorry, Perry, you took the word out of my mouth there. Uh, we see the police getting criticised quite often, don't we, for being political, for taking the knee, for doing TikTok dancers, for wearing pride flags. And a lot of this does, does, not, does it not come out of the fact that we are recruiting graduates. What would you um, say to the idea of recruiting more people, for example, former armed services veterans who, who leave the for forces um, at an early age, still have a lot to offer, and they have the right kind of attitude to get things done? Is the answer the recruitment to be widened to include people without degrees? Yeah, I 100% yeah, agree. Um, like I say, the recent policy has been to recruit people either with degrees or to join the police and then go on to getting a degree whilst in policing. But far much of policing is around using common sense and it doesn't have to come from a degree pathway or anything like that. You know, myself, I was just went to a normal school, I went to got GCSEs and then I had a successful career as a homicide detective um, for 30 years, and I, you know, rose through the ranks. So I think the whole policy needs to be looked at to recruit from a wider pool. Um, policing is one of the best jobs that you'll ever, ever do. You know, you get to help people day in, day out. And a vast majority of officers join the police to help people. I know the police has um, had some issues recently. The Met Commissioner is, is tackling that. But the Met, in generally, 99% of people want to do a good job, want to serve the public. The biggest problem also is that there's just not enough police officers to go around. To serve the communities they now represent, there's just not enough officers. And Perry, what about the, the, um, the criticism of the police, which I think has some merit, uh, that the, the force has become politicised, the old notion of policing without fear or favour doesn't seem to apply. For example, if you're um, a grammar school teacher that's gone into hiding in Batley um, and certain communities aren't getting the full force of the law, other communities aren't being protected. We've seen with pride and all of this. Would you, is it time, do you think, just to kick the politics out of policing? Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, the policing needs to, you know, um, do what the public want us to do. They want us to lock up uh, bad guys. They want us to protect them. They want us to um, 
help them where possible. But we need the community support. This is, you know, a bigger problem than just policing. It is almost like a society problem. You know, I've witnessed far too many incidents where, you know, police officers are getting involved in violent situations and rather than help the police, the public are videoing it. And, yeah. and you know, that needs to change. But it's a generational thing in that we need the public and all the public to help support the police, help the officers day in, day out. We need the politicians to allow the 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 senior leadership of the police to, to lead. They need to be able to make decisions when they want to hire and fire officers. You know, I've worked with colleagues that have got criminal convictions. And personally, I think that's wrong. I think, you know, we should be above the law. We should uphold the law. And, you know, far too many, um, you know, systems have been changed over the years where you have different leaders who think differently, who allow people with convictions to join the police. I, I think that's wrong. I think, you know, we should be um, serving the public better. OK, Perry, you're doing a fantastic job there of, of selling the police force. If anybody's listening now, what would you say to them to encourage them to apply to be a recruit? Um, it is such a unique job. You will never, ever have the variety in policing. You will never have the satisfaction of helping people, whether that's simply, you know, helping a, a, somebody who's lost property or, you know, helping find missing persons or even, like I say, solving crime, you know, arresting bad guys. You know, I say spent a lot of my career on homicide and I did everything I could with the teams that I work with to support families that are going through the most traumatic thing. And you know, the reward for me is trying to get, you know, a conviction for them, trying to get justice for them, but recognising that it's never ever going to be a loved one back. And, you know, the, the variety of police work is, is like no other job in the world. And you get to make such a difference. And I would urge anyone that's thinking about a change of career or joining the police to do so. But the biggest other problem is the salary. The salary for policing needs to be increased. You know, that is one of the biggest recruitment failures in that, you know, how do we encourage the best candidates, the right candidates to join the policing if the salary is so low? You know, police officers can't go on strike like other public services and other organisations. So we're here to do the best we can. But that needs to be looked at by the government as well. Perry Benson, you're talking epic amounts of common sense. I hope it catches on. And by the way, thank you for your service and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you for joining us today on GB News.